Hello, my name is Nicholas Blank, and today we're going to be talking about Exchange 2010 Care Servers. We'll talk about what is different in Exchange 2010 Care Servers, what a CARES array is, and how to build one. So CARES servers in Exchange 2010 are quite different from 2007. They still do what CARES servers used to do in 2007. So we still were the, the endpoints for Outlook Web App, POP3, IMAP, and so on and so forth. However, in 2010, we've got brand new functionality in the CARES, in that CARES now hosts Mappy. And CARES is the Mappy and the RPC endpoint for all the Outlook connections, with the one exception being um, connections to the public folder server. So RPC connections to the public folder uh, still go to the, the mailbox role that's hosting the public folder. Otherwise, all Outlook-based RPC connections and all other client connections of any kind terminate at the, the CARE server. So the biggest change is that the CARE server now hosts Mappy. Let's look at what's involved in building a CARES array. So a CARES array is a load balanced collection of CARES servers that are aware of the fact that they are part of a CARES array for the fact that we create a CARES array in Active Directory. Now we'll have a look at what's required in order to build a CARES array. First of all, we need to build a, a load balance cluster. And here we're using Network Load Balancing Manager to take mail2 and mail3, which are client access servers. And we've built a, a load balanced cluster called Array HQ. Now, theoretically, this is going to be my headquartered client access array. So with that in mind, you'll see the word HQ in quite a few places. So I've got mail2 and mail3, and I want these to be part of my, my load balance cluster. The next thing I need to do is I need to take that IP address that we've defined for our load balance cluster and define an A record for that in DNS. So I've gone and created one called Outlook, which is an A record with the IP address of my load balance cluster. Since our mail servers exist already, so the mailbox databases exist already, there's a fairly good chance that when we create the CARES array, the mailbox databases are going to be unaware of the CARES array and will thus be unable to refer clients to it when customers want to connect to a, a MAPI endpoint. So let's have a look what that looks like at the mailbox database level. So here we can see we've got three mailbox databases, one, two, and three, and each one of them is pointing to a CAS server respectively. So we can see that Mailbox server 1 points to um, mail 0 2, mailbox database 2 points to 2, and mailbox database 3 points to 3. So to correct what I said earlier, I said that the server points to mail 0 2. In fact, it's the database that's currently active on mailbox server 1, so mail 0 1. The database setting is pointing to mail 0 2 as the CAS server. Let's go ahead and create the client access array. So we want to give it a name that is reflective of where it'll be. I can only build one CAS array per Active Directory site.
So that's all I need to do in order to create my, my CAS array. I've given it a name. It has the FQDN and it sits in the AD site that's hosted. Now, here we can see that I've automatically picked up my clustered servers as part of my, my NLB cluster. And the, the logic that's in the command for client access array, for a new client access array, has recognized that mail02 and mail03 are part of the, the same NLB cluster. Now, bearing in mind that here we saw that this, the database for um, MBXDB02 is pointing to client, RPC client access server mail02. Now that we've created a cluster, we'd probably want to redirect the databases that's containing our mailboxes to the client access array that we've just created. How we do that is also relatively simple. Held down the shift key there. Now, the naming that I've used there is uh, a little bit selfish. Uh, assuming that I've got more than one Active Directory site with servers in it, I probably want to call this Outlook HQ to work with the rest of the naming convention that I've got there. So that if I need to create lots of client access arrays for lots of Active Directory sites, that are, are relatively self-descriptive. So let's do that again. Let's have a look at the the properties of this database now we can see that set to outlook.corp.contosa.com the next thing that we want to do is we want to fire up outlook and here we can see that outlook was quite good at, at finding the auto discover location and configured itself so we'll go ahead and let it configure now, the first time Outlook starts, it'll initialize. Let's go have a look at what we're connecting to. And here we can see that we're connecting to the, the CAS array that we created, as well as creating to the public folder endpoint, which is mail01. As you can see, the effort requirement required in creating a client access array is quite minimal. And the complexity isn't very high at all. Bearing in mind that you're creating one client access array per AD site and CARES servers are now the MAPI endpoint for all Outlook connections. Creating a client access array gives us a, a really nice easy mechanism of creating a high, r highly resilient CARES servers and CARES server infrastructure that can scale out quite nicely. So if I need to add more CARES servers, I just add more CARES servers to the, uh, the NLB array that I've created at that IP address. So 0.50 and 0 0.50 corresponding to the CAS array. Now, in terms of guidance, we don't really want to use NLB for more than eight machines since we, we run into limitations after that. So if we are hitting towards six or more even machines in an NLB array, we might want to start considering using an, an external load balancing mechanism. The mechanics for this are identical to most respects and um, we just need to make sure that the IP address corresponds to the location of the, the load balanced IP. So that's the IP address that we configure in DNS. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch and enjoy creating client access arrays.